Hello and welcome to all our viewers to Asia Rugby Players Lounge. Today we'll bring you some interesting information on what's happening throughout Asia and also in the world rugby. And uh, we were trying to get a Marcelo Bosch, a former Argentine center after that epic uh, performance by the Pumas against the All Blacks and also uh, the uh, uh, Wallabies uh, yesterday. However, we'll be keep posted on that uh, probably next week. But uh, before any further ado, let's talk about today's event. And uh, let me introduce our co-host, uh, uh, for the first time in this show, it's uh, none other than the Indonesian. Uh, joining me, Karina Surya Nata Miraja. Karina, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. This is something I am very much looking forward to doing. <laughs> it's, this seems yes. like a very, very, yeah, it seems like a really, really great time. How are you doing, Sabir, all the way there? In Sri Lanka. Very well, very well. Thank you. We are under the lockdown, but things are moving nicely. Hopefully, lockdown will release uh, by next week. Hope to go to the office and do some work as well. And let's uh, tell our fans uh, or the viewers uh, what you got uh, as topics for today. Well, everybody, today this week has been a very, very week, uh, a very, very big week for us rugby in general, especially in Asia, because we got the biggest highlights of today. That is the RWC draws of 2021. That's something we're going to be talking about today. And of course, we have to pay very, very big tribute to the newest Asian unions to join the world rugby family. But before we start and we get there, because those are the biggest news, we want to send a short shout out for Benjamin Van Royen. Asia Rugby's uh, development consultant who's already packed his bags and traveling around Asia again, while a lot of us are still pretty much at home. <laughs> so he's a pretty lucky one. He's apparently in Uzbekistan right now, already starting development work. And I hear there has been so many things going on. Back to you, Sabir. I'm so jealous he's got the chance to travel around the world. The other day I was talking to him along with Sicily, Africa, and my God, he's a uh, lovely temperature just by 10 celsius or somewhere around like that and he's been traveling around which is nice which is good for the rugby that uzbekistan yeah. have started their rugby in terms of yeah. their uh, seventh championship and the club championship and also in the universities which is a good sign let's go with the unstoppables uh, karina well um the unstoppables is something that's been happening in world rugby you know the big campaign last year that was launched that was uh, something really really big uh it took them years also to select um unstoppables and really pinpoint uh from all sorts of levels of rugby and all sorts of involvement because women in rugby aren't only players there are referees there are coaches high performance coaches there are also women in governance so it is very very great to see that world rugby is really raising all these amazing women's profiles and this year asia rugby has also decided to join in on the wave and conduct our very own unstoppable campaign in asia so we have a special video prepared for you let's check it out Ooh, we also well, uh, here. What do you think? Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, that was a lovely work uh, done uh, by Asia Rugby, and uh, we have got applications uh, eighty-four out of thirty-two unions. So I'm sure the judges having a nightmare in terms of selecting who are those uh, shortlisted uh, uh, candidates for this unstoppable. Yes, I mean, I got the emails and I, I was very, very happy to see that all of the unions are very enthusiastic about raising the profiles of women. I mean, this is a very, very big year towards next year's Rugby World Cup for women in rugby, not just players, but at all levels of the game. And we also have a special shout out video from our very own head of a Women's Advisory Committee of Asia Rugby, Ada Milby, who's also going to be explaining what is happening right now with the Asian Unstoppables. It's an exciting time to be part of Asia Rugby. At the moment, we're Let's going through an Unstoppables campaign, which is a build-off of the World Rugby campaign, which was launched in 2019. 
And World Rugby at that time identified 15 women from around the world to represent the different sizes and shapes and different ways of being involved in the game, ages, all sorts of things. It was really a fantastic campaign. And now World Rugby in 2020 have put the call out to the unions and the regions to say, adapt it, make it your own, and find your own unstoppables. And so Asia Rugby are doing just that, along with a lot of the unions within Asia Rugby. So I really encourage everyone to check out all the different union uh, pages and check out the stories that are coming out of the woodwork. It's been really inspiring time. We've had 84 applications from 32 countries and the decisions that we've had to make to, to try and, and whittle that, that number down to try and get to the top 15 has been a really, really challenging uh, challenging process for us and, and to help us in that we've actually we've got it down to the top 32 which is one representative from each union or one representative from each country that nominated and now we are in the process of, of selecting an external panel so that way it's there's no biases it's a completely transparent process so that this panel will be the ones to final have the final say the final selection in the top 15 of Asia rugby um, because we don't want these stories to just be told within Asia. We want these stories to be told outside of the rugby community. We want these stories to be shared on a global scale because we know that these, these stories are not only inspiring for those of us who are involved in rugby, but we know that they can be inspiring to people outside of rugby. For any woman that wants to be unstoppable in her life, for any woman that wants to take on a challenge, and so I'm really excited to talk about this Unstoppables campaign. Um, please stay tuned, check out the Asia Rugby social media pages often because in the next couple of weeks we should be announcing the top 15 for Asia and, and then from there we'll be doing some feature stories in the lead up to the Rugby World Cup 2021 in New Zealand. Sabir, what do you think? Very exciting times. Wonderful message, uh, Ada. Maybe thank you very much. Absolutely, it's inspiration. We want to make this inspiration not only to the Asian fraternity, entire 877 million rugby followers in 2019, yes. according to Nielsen report. Mm -hmm. And we can also go further beyond, I'm sure, but uh, I mean, we'll count, we'll wait and see who are the winners. I'm sure the people who are nominated will be. Uh, waiting till the results been out so like i said uh, other anyone uh, by the way uh, appointed from uh, your part of the world my part of the world yes indonesia <laughs> indonesia um what do you mean in the unstoppables campaign yes? yes um we've also been going through it it has been i had to stay neutral because apparently they put up my name as well but you know what i am uh, I am, of course, because I put up, I'm not, uh, I'm not in the judging panel. And as Ada said, it is going to be as unbiased and as transparent as possible. So that she is assuring us. So as she said, please stay tuned to all of our Asia Rugby Live social media platforms. That is it on Instagram and Facebook for all the latest upcoming updates. And by the way, you have a two-year-old daughter who's already playing a rugby, who's already obsessed with rugby in her own right. So I am super excited about this. Hopefully this she gets to see and gets to be inspired by as well. And I also want to point out, uh, Ada, thank you very much for your thoughts uh, on that. <laughs> also, the, the, during the Women's Rugby uh, World Cup uh, draw, even the Lions, former Lions and England and Harley Quinn's Uga Moni mentioned that uh, the yeah. lovely story about uh, his yeah. daughters uh, also uh, coming in and saying that they want to be in the Rugby World Cup very in the future. So uh, also, uh, there were a few uh, uh, nominees that uh, we had a chat with uh, in terms of Unstoppable Campaign. We had a chat with Kazakhstan's uh, player, we had a chat with mm. Chinese, Japanese and also Sri Lankans uh, and around the world. So we wish all the very best for them. Uh, whoever wins, uh, win with pride. Well, I don't think it's a win-win situation. I think is anybody, a woman in rugby is already a complete winner because they are taking huge risks for their own um, their own belief in becoming unstoppable. So that is already a winner. I believe everybody's story is worth hearing and we're only going to get, it's, it's the hardest part about this campaign is having to choose out of so many great stories, but we're hoping all of the unions also with this campaign will keep bringing out a lot of stories and not just of women, but also of the men behind the scenes. I just think it's, it's a good way to start and you also have an update for us that is the latest uh, asia rugby family unions to join the world rugby family unions do you have details yes indeed such a great news to all the member unions especially Lao and uh, 
Iran Rugby under the World Rugby Membership and also uh, Nepal as the Associate Membership. And uh, we have some uh, videos lying up uh, from the presidents uh, of all those unions. And before that, uh, let's see what is the message from our president, Mr. Kais Abdullah Abdullah. From Dubai, I really want to congratulate Iran Rugby Association, Nepal Rugby Federation and Laos Rugby Federation for being admitted in World Rugby membership. This has been a long way for the three unions. I'm very happy today. I think on behalf of Asia Rugby family, uh, well done to the three to the three unions. Uh, there are many things to do in the future. Keep up the good work. Great message, uh, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure that will uplift the entire region uh, that he mentioned. And there's so many development work to be come up in the future from those regions. Yes, and I hear we have more videos to show from Iran and Laos, who've officially become full members and Nepal selected as associate members. Let's look at the videos as well. There we go. That's the message from the president of a Lao Rugby Federation. Uh, I'm sure they are delighted with that. Yes, very much. And when you look at how Laos and Iran has developed, and since we're on the big topic of Unstoppables, we have to send Iran a shout out because uh, Nahid, uh, one of Iran's female icon in rugby, uh, has made it to the Unstoppable list of World Rugby last year which has definitely elevated their profile. And not to mention, everybody knows Lao Kang of Laos, who has become one of BBC's women of 2018. So it is high wow. time for these two um, unions. They deserve, you know, this membership from all of their hard work. And Nepal has, in the last couple of years, you know, done a lot of development, a lot of growing. So well done on becoming an associate membership because we still have some videos from, uh, do we still have any videos from the presidents or any statements from these unions? I think, yes, so we do have uh, from Nepal. I should mention that uh, Nepal hosted the South Asian Games last year successfully. Ooh. There was, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good uh, step forward in terms of uh, yeah. hosting the, the events, although in the difficulties, it was uh, going with uh, so many postponements. But uh, before we go to the Nepal's uh, video, let's uh, go to what Iran's president had to say for us. In the name of God, hello everyone in the Asia Rugby family. I am very happy for the full membership of Iran Rugby in the World Rugby Federation. I must say thanks to President of the World Rugby and the Manager at Department of Women and the President Asia Rugby because they support us for 10 years ago. And also, I must say thanks for Iranian Sport Youth Ministry and IRNOC Iran and Mr. Alipur. Really, I think we must work hard today than yesterday, because at this time, we must work 
for a world rugby and Asia rugby together. It's very hard way, but we can do. In the end, we can do better, but together in a world. Thank you very much. Absolutely, indeed, we can do it together to the betterment of uh, our sport, indeed. Uh, thank you for the message from the Iran uh, president, uh, uh, rugby union's president. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we have another video uh, lined up, which is a message from the Nepal president. Hello, my name is Tankal Alge I am president of Nepal Rugby Association. I would like to express my sincere thanks to World Rugby Council for the approval as an associate member. This credit goes to the Asia Rugby, who supported to us for bringing this level. I have been highly delighted at the moment of recognition of our hard work. The dimension of Nepal Rugby has been increased, and I am so happy for this achievement. In the meantime, I would like to thank the people who have helped to move forward in the development of rugby in Nepal, Mr. Kes Abdullah Ayit Dalai, President of Asia Rugby, and Mr. Rizal Saad, Old Rugby Service Manager for Asia. Thank you. Well, that Thank is definitely you. one of the countries I want to visit. Holiday-wise and rugby-wise. I am absolutely got it. I couldn't make it to South Asian Games and to have a view of that beautiful Mount Everest. But time will come, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yes, f hopefully, fingers crossed. Speech especially, speaking of games, apparently we have actually crossed paths before. You came to Indonesia for the Asian Games 2018, and we've never f actually met. <laughs> so it's good yeah, to be that, even here. And that's a shame, uh, Karina. And uh, you know what? Uh, I was like uh, wearing the Sri Lanka jersey and supporting. We went uh, very close to beat uh, Japan. That was 10 to mm. 12. And I was ready with my flag to step into the ground. I know it's been a, a yellow carded offense, but you know, I was ready. But unfortunately, I have to wait until the China Asian Games, maybe 2022. Yes, we do miss tournaments. That is for sure. And we wish everybody well. And we hope uh, everybody at their own pace of recovery. Because I know as much as there are unions now who can already play full games and start training again, there are also unions that are still um, like us both, staying at home and doing very, very minimal things. So we can all get through this together. So you have more updates from our Asia region before we move on to the big big highlight of today absolutely and uh, about the michael leach scholarship for young mongolian boy uh, what a great uh, uh, venture by michael leach of course legend he himself uh, came mm -hmm. to uh, japan when he was 15 years and he I, he came to study and to play rugby and then uh, after three years playing rugby he captained japan under 18. what mm -hmm. a story on that and giving a scholarship you know what uh, Karina, when I was a schoolboy, I was thinking, when will I get a scholarship like that to <laughs> go for a higher studies or to play for a play uh, in a club or to learn more in terms of uh, gaining knowledge? But this is for the young Mongolian boy, what an achievement uh, because uh, uh, Leach found the talent and uh, he himself invited this young boy to watch the Rugby World Cup uh, last year and also now he's studying and playing rugby in a club. Fascinating, isn't it? I mean, that just goes to show that there is a lot of support towards education when it comes to rugby community. We value it so much because, you know, it is very important to have great balance in life. And I really think this rugby energy rubs off you off the field as well. And that makes it so special, right? Absolutely, indeed. I'm sure every country uh, will uh, adapt uh, this sort of scholarship for up and coming uh, athletes uh, to gain more knowledge and experience in terms of education and also in terms of uh, playing rugby. And uh, what we got next, uh, Karina? This is the one that we have been waiting for. So uh, just a little bit of an introduction. I posted uh, I posted one of the posters of uh, the 2021 RWC on my Insta stories just today. And I have a lot of my friends comment, what, the next RWC is in 2023. <laughs> so this is, this is something new that I think rugby is so progressive. And this is why I'm so proud to be a part of the rugby community is that uh, last year they announced and the Decided that all of the Rugby World Cups 
will have no gender titles, which means Rugby World Cup was, will officially happen every two years now, including next year's in New Zealand, that they just had an amazing draw a few days ago that I was... I, I, I was watching live and I was as nervous because there were so many great, powerful women in that room alone. And we're talking about the Prime Minister of New Zealand, um, Ms. Jacinda, and she, she also took one of the draws. And if you saw the results, uh, I mean, like the results of the pool draws that we have, those are pretty epic and very, very, very competitive. I mean, in pool A, I go through pool A, in pool A, we have New Zealand, Australia, Wales, and there is going to be one more final qualifier towards the end of this year, and the winner will join Pool A. I mean, we have New Zealand, Australia, and Wales in one pool. That is already a very, very competitive, very, very competitive um, uh, Yeah, draw. we have but that before, concert. That's been a, a fight on that uh, particular event. Uh, yes. I mean, I mean, I'm 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 following World Rugby and also the Rugby World Cup Instagram pages, and they've been uh, doing a lot of very very interesting interesting interviews that they cut out and put the statements on social media. So that's very interesting. But before that, we actually have uh, a little bit of a highlight video for you from the Rugby World Cup draw earlier this week. There you go. Well, there we go. Yes. Yes. Well, if there is no image we have right now, you can always check out the Rugby World Cup and the World Rugby Instagram social pages. It's all over the news as well because it is going to be a very epic Rugby World Cup next year. So who do we have in Pool B and C, Savir? Pool B, we have uh, Canada, uh, USA, mm -hmm. Europe 1, and Asia 1. Now, Asia 1, that's going to be interesting clash because the qualifiers, just uh, hopefully we might see the qualifiers happening in March between Japan, Hong Kong, and Kazakhstan. So it's going to be mm. an interesting battle between the Asian giants. Definitely the top three women teams here in Asia. I'm very looking forward because Asia won last year. Uh, Japan took that one and Hong Kong took the, the other place from Asia. So I'm really, really looking forward to what happens end of this year and early next year before the World Cup. Yes, indeed. And also, this is the first time it's going to be hosted in a Southern Hemisphere. And I want to ask you, Karina, mm. do you know who won the inaugural Rugby World Cup? Mm, the women won. Yes. No more mm. women now, let's say. It was in yes, 1991. Okay. Yes. 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 So in 1991. Uh, can I guess? All right. I'll give you three. It's uh, Wales, USA, New Zealand. Wales. Wales hosted, if I'm not mistaken, and USA mm. became the champions. I was surprised too, just got to know this morning. I mean, so, that's uh, probably the reason why there are the fastest rugby women's, I mean, the fastest growing rugby women's game in the world right now. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it much us, yeah, 20 years uh, since then, and you can see the numbers in terms of participation. That is a fabulous work uh, by the USA. And let's go into the next pool. Everyone's focus before the draw was uh, where mm. will France uh, come on to play? Uh, because mm. they didn't see that in the top three in the eventually concluded 2017 Rugby World Cup. So in Pool C, we have England, France, South Africa and Fiji. Uh, England women beat France yesterday at Twickenham and a week before as well. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, this French team uh, is the main team uh, when you look into the All Blacks, uh, Australia and other major teams are looking for because they can be the dark horses uh, at any given time. We see uh, how, uh, how uh, different style uh, they played uh, during the Six Nations and also they will be playing in the Autumn Series, especially the men's team. So also the under-19 or under-20 teams have won the Rugby World Cup as well. So there's a huge... Uh, growth and the news uh, development in terms of uh, French life and also, uh, you know, they are hosting the next Rugby World Cup in 2023, Karina. Well, this is definitely another very experienced pool. So I'm actually very much looking to all this. This um, I, I just feel like from the very beginning, this is already going to be a very epic Rugby World Cup 2021. It's definitely something we look forward to. 
Absolutely, indeed. And uh, we'll uh, see the qualifiers, Asian qualifiers, like I mentioned, Japan, Kazakhstan, and Hong Kong. We wish all the teams the best, and the winner will have uh, promoted automatically, and the runner-up uh, of that tournament might have a chance to play in the rapid charge qualifiers later yes. in 2021, just before the Rugby World Cup. That's going to be a tough one because if they come in that final qualifier, they will be in the hardest and the toughest pool, probably the Pool A. Yes, indeed, it's going to be interesting and Pool A. Any, it's it's going to be anyone's game, you know. If uh, Japan yeah. or one of the Asian teams qualify, we can see some uh, surprises coming in. I really like to see, just like the men's Japan team. Uh, did against Scotland, did against Ireland. Maybe if the women can do a miracle, maybe if Kazakhstan go do and do well, or why not Hong Kong? So we'll wait and see, Karina. I think uh, you got uh, some message for our fans uh, about the four presidents joining uh, this week uh, on Asia Rugby Live. Yes, this is actually a very, very big Asia Rugby Life episode because we will have four regional presidents of Rugby Asia, Africa, Europe and Sud America speaking. And uh, we will hear from them uh, about how development is going, perhaps how the unions have started to recover and how they have started to manage playing in this new normal time. So I cannot wait to hear... Um, uh, upcoming 26th of November, 4 p.m. Dubai time. So all you got to do is make sure you follow all Asia Rugby Live social media platforms because it will go live on Facebook. And yes, Facebook Live. That's right. That's right. That's 26th of November, Tuesday. Do log with us. Uh, and uh, that's all we have for this uh, uh, week, so this Sunday's edition. And uh, myself, uh, Sabrin Kata, signing off along with Along with Karina here, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.